All right, there we go. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Team here. And this is another episode of BXJS, a show about building things with JavaScript. And uh, today we're doing another proposal as usual. And this time around, it's going to be the Chrome browser extension. Uh, so this is, I think, one of the first proposals submitted, as you can see here is number eight. But uh, it is one of the top voted, I think there was like five most voted proposals this time around and just picked one at random. Uh, well, not exactly random because I actually have a small problem that I want to solve here today. So uh, as you might know, I now have the BXGS weekly podcast that talks uh, where I talk about the JavaScript news. And the problem is I don't really have a good tool to collect all those links. So the way I do it right now is I have this Trello card and it has a bunch of links here, which is, as you might imagine, not exactly nice. I mean, it works for now, but I would prefer something nicer. The other problem is that when I create the final file for the episode in the GitHub, I have to create a markdown, I have to take in the titles and write all of that manually and it's it's a pain in the ass. So I want to automate it, right? So the idea today is to create a Chrome extension that would allow me to bookmark stuff to uh, and then export it basically as a collection in a markdown file, right? With titles and links. So this is what we're going to try to do. And um, as just as the proposal asked, we're going to be doing Chrome extension. I don't think uh, like we can also try to port it to Firefox at some point later if you guys are interested. Um, in theory, there is now web extension standard that should be supported by all browsers at some point so that you could make one extension which will work on all browsers. In practice, as far as I know, that still doesn't really work that way. So uh, we're going to focus on Chrome for today. Um, I'm going to create a folder, let's call it uh, mark stash, I uh, know not what stash extension, I'm going to um, CD into it and uh, let me fire up the VS code, um, make it maybe slightly bigger so that you can see what's going on npm init minus y, I don't know if we're going to need npm here, but I mean, you know what, maybe we don't need npm, maybe we'll just do it like very low fi and very um, very vanilla JS, let's put it this way. Um, <laughs> hey, Renato, yes, I, get, I got a haircut because I got uh, tired of my hair getting in my face. Uh, that happens from time to time. And I do tend to get um, my hair cut very short at some point. So yes, let's do this. Okay, so but back to the Chrome extension. So Chrome extension tutorial, right, is what we want. I think the Actually, last time I checked, so last time I built extension was quite some time ago, I think about two or three years ago. But as far as I remember, um, Google or Chrome team had an amazing documentation that outlined basically everything that you have to know. So we are going to just use that, right? So um, I think, yeah, I think maybe we don't really need to permit anything. So exactly, we want a button in the uh, toolbar. Then we'll have two actions. Action number one is going to be add uh, something, add a current link, current tab to the list. And button number two would be export the current, or no, I guess three buttons. So we would want to add something to the list. We would want to uh, show the list, the currently collected links. And then we would want to export the links to the markdown. And additionally, I would create it in a way that would basically sync the stored list using the Google uh, infrastructure. So if you if you don't if you didn't know that, if you are using Google Chrome and you are logged into your browser, you can actually sync um, extension data ac across your clients, right? So we're going to use that as well because I'm using multiple machines and I want my uh, bookmarks to be persisted everywhere. You know, for this specific case. All right, so we um, we are starting with yes manifest JSON. So this is exactly what we're going to create. I'm going to create manifest JSON, right? So we have a JSON file that describes our extension. I'm just going to copy this thing here, and uh, we're going to call it. So it's going to be mark uh, markdown. No, like, let's just call mark mark stash. I think mark stash is fine, right? Simple extension um, that allows collecting links for stuff. <laughs> this is the worst description ever. That was collecting links and exporting them as a markdown. That's let's just write it this way, right? So it's going to be version 1.0. Why not? 
we do need an icon and uh, I don't, yeah, we need a storage and active tab permission. So storage permission is basically allows us to store stuff and active tab allows us to access active tab. Uh, so we would need an icon. I think we're going to go to undraw and um, try to find something here. If you're not familiar with this, this is like the unsplash, but for SVGs essentially has some very nice icons here. So we can probably take one and use it for um, ourselves. All of these are Creative Commons, so you can freely use it for whatever the hell you want. Attribution is always welcome. So let's see, we got no data that looks kind of nice. Uh, let's see, add files, that's not what we want. I mean, it's not that many of them yet. So I'm just going to go to the very bottom you by the way, you have probably seen those icons used in my splash screen. So like I removed some stuff and then use that on my loading screens or um, templates, or blah, whatever. Um, hi, Jamalt, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. So let's continue searching for the icon. So we need something that resembles bookmarks, maybe documents that might look okay. Um, is there anything better fitting resume is definitely not what we want. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, I guess documents would probably do right. So because empty data is a bit too empty for us. So let's go for documents. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I mean, we're not we're not doing a startup here. We don't really care much about the identity. So we are going to go for that. I'm not going to go for the PNG here, I think. And I'm going to move the downloads. Um, where is my PNG now? Uh, this one, right? So we're going to call it icon PNG. I am not sure what kind of okay, so it's square and it's uh, not exactly square, but let's hope it's fine, right? So it's going to be icon PNG. And then we need a pop up HTML, which will contain our pop up for now is just going to be say h1 um, hello world, right? So it's going to be just HTML, nothing fancy here. So now here I have my um, developer user uh, like how do I explain it? You know that in Chrome, you have actually users, right? So you can pick one of the people or manage them. So I have my main account where I browse stuff. And then I have the developer account that has um, a bunch of extensions that are basically specifically developer related. And I only want them to run whenever I am developing, because running that on every other website would destroy my memory. And that is not something I want. Um, and by memory, I mean, of course, RAM. So uh, right. I actually need to go to extensions anyway, but no nope. extensions. There we go. And uh, load unpacked extension. This is what we want. So we want to point it to our folder, right? So we're going to go to the projects bxjs and uh, mark stash extension. Select like this one. All right, it seems to be loaded. Um, where is it? This is the one it looks so it works. Uh, the icon looks terrible, though. So I guess I mean, for now, whatever we can edit it a bit, or maybe I can just edit it. Whoops, no, that's not what we want. Go back. Nope, that's a bit too much back. Go forward. Um, yeah, I can maybe edit it off screen and make it slightly nicer, make it like more transparent or something. And you know, but this is again, this is not relevant today. All right, so we got our pop up. Pop up works. Icon works. Extension loads. Um, right, so we can, um, yeah, we can probably act add title. Um, so what I'm thinking is mark stash, let's call it like this, right? So theoretically, uh, there is, should be a button reload, there we go. In theory, let me move it here. And I think I can just hide those in Chrome menu because we don't really care about them right now. Um, in theory, we should see the tooltip. There we go. That works. So what we want to do now is add some uh, things, right? So we want to add three actions and um, we need some styles. So what I'm thinking is we can either do that we just using vanilla JS, vanilla CSS, but that means we would have to style everything ourselves. Or we can drag in a framework like Bulma or whatever. But that would mean that we have a bunch of wasted um, CSS essentially, right? So um, let's see. So those extensions are typically, I think they're like styling them themselves, right? So we got some stuff here. Hmm. Thinking like, yeah, maybe something like this would look nice, right? So we got the temper monkey here. And maybe we got this nice big um, cool looking um, entry. So I guess 
what we could do actually is, you know what, we can just, uh, wait a second, we can just start in a simple server, right? This is what we do. Yes, please. I think my Python updated recently. And if we now go to localhost 8080, we should actually see our pop-up here. And what we could do is we could just um, turn that thing, uh, turn the whole uh, screen into the mobile screen, right? Uh, and adjust it to the expected size. So we, it's going to be like 300 pixels wide and maybe, um, where's the, hey, like 108 and then 150 zoom. Um, it's way smaller than it should look, but that is okay, I guess, right? So what we can do is we can basically um, edit that. So let's have a look at their pop-up HTML. Um, why are you downloading it? But that's fine. Okay, view page source. So they have the full head here, right? So let's do the same, right? So this, there you go. All right, so yes, yes. So we can kill all of that. We don't need this. Um, getting started with extensions. So it's going to call uh, Mark. What was it? Mark stash. I already forgot how the hell did I call that extension. <laughs> all right. So we got some styles here. We are going to um, this, right? So we don't need script for now. I'm going to command that out. So we first care about the um, First, first of all, we care and uh, that does not work as well as I thought it would. First of all, we care about we make it bigger. We care about the layouts, general layout. So we need we don't care about the uh, select. So we need three buttons, right? So we're going to have a button that is going to say um, add link, right? Uh, add current tab to stash. Let's call it this way. I have another button that's going to say show stash, right? And we're going to have a third button that's going to say export stash to markdown. There we go. Okay, so now it's probably going to look terrible. Yes, and the container is flex. Uh, so we're going to say flex direction is going to be column, I think. Uh, but I always mess those up. I never remember how to. Yeah, there you go. Okay, column is good. Right, so we are, I don't think we're going to need this. Uh, we are, yes, so we're going to do this. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of dragging all Bulma here, I'm just going to go ahead and um, copy the CSS. So you know what? I'm just going to make a pop-up CSS here. And instead of saying that it's a style, Oh my God, hell, if I remember how do you write link things? Um, no, 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 that's not what I want. Close this, um, page source, link rel style sheet, right? So this is what we want and we wanna paste it here. And then we're gonna say here is gonna be pop up CSS, right? Copy this thing, um, kill that, paste it here. It works good. Okay, now we're going to take the Bulma buttons and just take the specifically button CSS. It's an elements, right? And those are nice looking buttons. So we can take like, uh, yeah, I guess normal ones would do. So those the basic ones, you can just take this. This is a button, right? We take computed style and uh, there should be a way to export that. Hell if I remember how to properly do that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, no, this is addition. This is hover classes. There was a button rendered fonts. Okay, um, properties event listeners. I do remember there was a way to export CSS. Okay, Chrome Dev Tools export CSS for. We're gonna do that. Uh. <laughs> What I don't like about the web development is 2019. I mean, it's it's much better than the God damn it, my tongue today doesn't really listen to me. Um, it is much better today than it was quite I mean, a few years ago it was way worse, let's just put it this way. Get all CSS rules for specified element. Yes, uh CSS use snap. Okay, so there's just extensions for that. You cannot really export CSS for DOM elements. Yes, this is what I want. Oh, you can just do export styles. I see. Okay, so what we can do is we can do this. 
and we can say dollar one i believe no dollar zero oops uh yeah dollar zero and then we can say da 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 dollar zero export uh, export styles is not a function so you are lying to me stack overflow answer oh that's uh what yep is that wait is your chrome not bothering my way i actually needs to support get computed style um are they seriously suggesting extending the elements prototype to just get okay no no we're not gonna do that we're not gonna we're not even gonna try to do that right um what are my docs i yeah sure why not let's take it from the docs you just say we want a button right and uh, we can tweak it a bit uh we're not again we're not super focused good thing is that we're running on chrome so we can kill all those prefixed bollocks because uh, chrome supports them without prefixes so that makes our css three times smaller um and right i need to say that this is a class button right so we are running very lo-fi here there we go so looks nicer so now we need to say that they are um actually flex one right because we want them to stretch to the whole width but they are not doing that for some reason why are you not doing this uh is it because no wait a second this container should be flex right so are you not flex is that why display flex no is it flex grow i'm always confusing those things no still know that they're like white space adding padding justify hate um i don't see any width here specified so why are you not growing i guess because no the container is full width right so why are you not okay time <laughs> flexbox cheat shit time for this and uh yes okay then how do we stretch so this is this yes and now can we get full width um hey okay, uh, you are definitely flex one zero zero big item small item okay so theoretically is that what like it should still whoa <laughs> that did not go well but i thought flex one should work for all of those right one oh no one why are you not growing second okay i am you guys familiar with flexbox i need some help here so flex justify display flex trap i mean i guess we actually can um so what i'm thinking is first of all we don't need this justify uh we don't need display flex we don't need line it ah there you go so it was line items this is what screwed them up okay so we can kill that and uh we can uh so we got the padding bottom padding right um i guess we can say padding top your point that's a very weird calc here so i am not even sure we need that I'm gonna kill that i don't know if that's that still looks fine we're okay um i would say that basically um you know what is there a way to sort those okay i think there is a sort function right sort lines there we go so um yeah, that is definitely not gonna work that is not what we want border radius border color uh that is i think the border will override that right so we don't really need that or maybe we do okay let's leave that and see we actually can have a look at it well oops, that. oh i guess because it does override it right so the too many there we go pixel no that's not radius or is it kill the color because we say there there we go okay uh let's have a look at the button okay now all properties are applied so we're good right so we got three buttons that can be pressed um okay i think we can just add the javascript now right so i'm just gonna give it ids basically so it's gonna be add let's call it add button 
going to be a dash button and it's going to be id um, export button right so now we need javascript um okay for a um, pop-up yes yep that i screwed that up okay add the pop-up js and now let's so this works now let's test if that actually displays properly here there we go so we have our buttons um looks nice maybe we add some separator after the first one and why is it focused that's another question but um you know what i guess we could so yeah we can kill that we can have a look at the button here effect and uh, maybe say yeah, what no button please thank you once and we have a hover class uh hover okay this is our hover this is what we want to do okay cool um where's our css is it no is it not hover right it's it is the other thing what do you call it right it's not hover but hover is nice anyway is it focused right yeah it is focused okay this is what we want put in focus okay just to have it all kind of nicer than just some gray outline kill the webkit shadow prefix because we don't really need it refresh um that still doesn't look correct why is it this that is strange so you are now what uh on that the button you is that focus yeah it is focus so where's my i thought i did focus thing right box shadow not active um oh is that because of this whoops this yeah i guess this is because of that right and then uh, nope what am i doing wrong button folk oh i guess there is some additional stuff here okay i guess we can copy all those three and uh, maybe that will work nicely yeah we can do that why not uh yes that okay there we go much nicer now it actually looks properly um refresh the extension so now we have this stuff and uh yeah we can press those things okay uh so we got that now we need css right documents um i guess we can just add us first of all put this script at the bottom so that it gets invoked and i guess we could just use the sync attribute as well because we are running um in 2018 so right okay uh, so it's going to be this i'm going to say documents um an element by id so we're going to get our buttons right so we got three buttons just do no, 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 no. much one two three copy that okay um gonna be this stuff then i remove those id i'm gonna say this is a const let me document get element by id and i actually canceled that a bit too quickly so we get all those and paste them in here right so this has our three buttons um this should be invoked immediately there you go and let's actually see if that works right so stash button and export button theoretically we should see here our three buttons perfect cool so we now need to add the event listeners right so add button add event listener Take say um just log for now console log where no 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 what the hell is this console log add clicked okay and the same whoops same for um, stash stash clicked and the same for export right export export click so very simple nothing fancy here just your vanilla js there you go all of them work if we do the same here we actually want to uh, inspect pop-up so you can um, make this larger it's too, way too tiny there we go 
Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. So you can inspect pop-ups and uh, you have a way to basically manage uh, not what I wanted. So again, so inspect pop-up, right? There we go. So if I click it here, you're gonna see the logs down below. This is actually from the pop-up. So there are tools to debug your extensions properly. Okay. Careful that fully. Okay, right. So uh, now I think we're no longer can actually test it in our browser, at least uh, for this case. So what we need to do is I'm gonna close this and uh, we need to actually, once they have pop-up JS here, they don't really provide it. Oh, I guess. Where's the repository? The hey, um, the, the, the example, and for repository, pop up JS. Okay, I mean, let's have a look. Um, Q, why, what? No, no, I don't want to open JavaScript file in a Qt creator. What the? Okay, uh, let me just do the Sublime downloads. Um, pop up JS. Um, that is super tiny. That is query info okay so they get current tab url perfect we need exact there ah, sublime stop it we need exactly that um just sort of i don't care about you right now so we are going to have a function here right uh and this is exactly going to be the same function so it's going to be get url um i am not going to make it callback based i'm going to make it a promise because i like promises and it's going to be resolve reject right and then we're going to have our function here uh, i think did i screw it up no i didn't okay cool got the query info uh this is going to be passed so the chrome is the global var i guess we can just say that um as lint from i believe it's like this no and not like this um uh okay second <laughs> yes lint global um inline comments i know there is a way to basically specify that but i always forget that it is inline comment is in disable um global ah it's just global okay this there we go okay so uh, we got tab const tab so this is the first tab we got the url we can use destruction here to make it nicer um can assert i mean we don't really need a cert here and i can we i guess we can just remove the comments as well because it's just explanation of how that works and it's pretty seems to be pretty straightforward right so resolve and uh, it looks like it cannot actually reject it so we just this and that means that uh, we can actually say that this is a sync. No, not that this can be a normal function. So we are going to say that this is a sync, right? And uh, now I'm going to say that URL is going to be await get uh, current tab URL. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is going to be URL. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to reload the extension. We're going to go to Google.com, for example, um, whatever. And once we clearly, uh, we should probably inspect this. And let um, I me, mean, that, 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 God damn it. Okay, I think I'm just going to move it to the right side and then I'm going to inspect it. Move the inspector to the right side, this to the left. And then if I click that, we should get the URL. Perfect. So we need the URL and um, get current tab so we actually want url and title right so i'm gonna say url and title well, title and now we need to get the title from here so how do you okay let's see chrome extension tab uh docs right we want documentation on how the tabs look exactly and uh permission tabs yes 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 get current is that what no uh, why do we need to query if there's a get current method now that's an interesting one um so it is yeah i guess <laughs> um okay i mean fine get current so we can we can do that which means we can actually simplify this thing like this right tab yeah that's way simpler thank you very much 
Okay, um, so it's gonna be get current tab URL and title. And not the title, there we go. Okay, so what does the tab object contains? We have ID, index, window ID, selected, highlighted, pins, discarded, title. There we go. Okay, so we just basically distract and say, uh, you know what? We can just actually say this. Make it like one liner. There we go. So in theory, that should work actually. Um, close this, go back, reload. Inspect, add to stash, and uh, get. Oh, I made a typo that is not very nice. It's double R. Okay, once again, uh, come on, once again, reload. This debugging process is a bit annoying, but I don't know if there's a better way. Can I get property URL of non defined or null? Um, what am I doing wrong? Get current, right? All back. Function tab. Okay, so it does return a tab. So uh, what do you not like? Let's see. Solve uh, title URL, right? Const URL title uh, and tab. Okay, first of all, console log tab. Oh, okay. Um, here's the question. What am I doing wrong? Uh, maybe I maybe the tab object is not what you expect. Reload that. Expect. The stash. Um, undefined. Well, you said you return tab. Are you lying to me? That's the tab that script made from. Maybe undefined if called from non-tab context. Okay, that's why I guess that's why they're using the um the whole thing right okay i see i see that's what what it meant okay we can do that um right okay now it ex this explains everything okay so basically they they do this query for all tabs and getting the current and active one uh because otherwise the browser doesn't know what exactly is the active tab if you're calling it from the extension right so uh, we are going to say yes tabs this is going to be tab from zero and uh, there we go so this should work right let's re well nope what where's my extensions reload that reload this effect and now we should actually get the title and cool so we got the title we got the url and uh now we can actually store it, right? So there is the Chrome, uh, we don't need that. So a Chrome uh, extension, there's a storage API, storage. And there is two ways of using it. So one way is that you can use it locally and the other way is you can use the sync thing, which will automatically sync with the user account. I believe sync does fall back to the local, um, if there's no account, obviously. So we are just gonna do this and uh, that key value. Okay, so you said key value. Yes, so I guess, um, yes, like why don't they use callbacks everywhere? I want my async wait. Okay, um, you know what? I'm gonna simplify that a bit, like how it's called that all here. Const uh, tab very config let's call it this way config thank you very much okay that looks slightly nicer um promise i'm gonna write my own tiny util here function you promise of um This is what we want, right? This is the basic version, but um, can be function, and then uh, this is gonna resolve into a tab. Okay, yeah, I think we can work with this. Basically, what we want is to say permissify this. Actually. Yeah, no, that's that's correct. So no, this is gonna be the call. So we want to say bind all this, right? So we 
but wait, is bind takes the first thing is this arg? Yeah, okay, exactly. So uh, we don't no longer need this, which means gonna return tab. So let's make our code slightly nicer. Um, right, so. And that means there's gonna be get active tabs, right? Gonna be tabs const um, active tab is gonna be basically that no, once uh, tabs from zero, right? And we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do that. And this is gonna be, I guess we can just shorten that to this and it looks way nicer now. Okay, cool. Uh, so we got the permissify, we got this thing. Okay, um, so what, what did we need? We need to store stuff, right? So store, um, store object in storage. That is very descriptive. Let's just call it store. It's gonna say permissify. And the function is gonna be, it's gonna take object, right? And it's gonna run, I mean, I guess we can just probably bind this. That uh, so yeah we just we just permissify this right. Uh, let me have a look quick look in the chat. Um, we use life instead block scope function. Um, yeah, using immediately invoked function is very much a habit. A habit. Uh, you can use block scope function as well, obviously, but I'm just you know it's hard to get rid of that stuff. Um, Right. Okay. Seems to be good. All right. We got store and we got um we need what's the get? Okay. Yes, we can use save and load functions here. Let me save load. So permissify. We got a very stupid version of permissify going, but I think that should work, right? I mean, okay, so we got these tabs now, and now we're gonna say save, and it's gonna be um, no. First of all, we're gonna say uh, so we need to first fetch saved tabs, right? Uh, save saved links. Say loads, and you provided an array of things, right? So we're gonna say links, and we have to await that. Okay, console log dot save links and that is going to be links there we go i think we're going to make it a sync and uh get button pointers before that we're going to just um try to load the needs yes yes yeah it would be better to do it this way okay on data gonna say await load links Maybe we can just get a links key so that we don't have to use the magic strings everywhere. Um, link key, there we go. All right, we got that. Uh, so if links, if we don't have any links, we're gonna say save. Um, oh wait, save is gonna be, yes, I guess, yeah, I guess we have to do it like this. Link key, so it's gonna be array gonna be links key. what no. links key it's gonna be equal empty array right so we so that we have some sort of array in there all right then once we get that we load the array we got the saved links say that uh, saved links push URL title and then we just do a wait save um, links key equals or to our saved links, right? So theoretically, console, uh, bleh, come on, console log saved. This is what we want. So if I close this, no, 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 yeah, stop jumping, reload the extension, inspect the pop-up. Uh, I believe we should, uh, what is invocation from set does not match set object optional function. Oh, I forgot to provide the callback, right? Um, we actually need to do this 
like this, right? Object, this is going to be Uh, wait a second. Because they take the callback, the last function, that's the problem, right? Um, okay. Uh, yes, it might be easier. Oh, man, it's such a pain in the ass that I have to permissify this myself. Okay. Right. Maybe this permissify function is not such a great idea. Maybe let's just do it in an old way. Promise to this resolve. Turn this to blah blah blah. Uh, we don't need to find anymore. We can just simplify it. This good. So kill that. Okay. So we got the object. We return new promise f resolve, which will do set object and then trigger resolve. Same here. Yeah. We guess permissify in this case was an overkill. So let's not do that. Object r. Okay. Um, now, reload the thing, check the pop-up, no errors, hopefully this time around. Um, I was saying that I believe that we should be able to actually see the storage as well. I don't think there is any storage yet. Yeah, so it's clean now. So in theory, we click add stash now. It, if links push is not a function, it's an object for whatever reason. Uh, why does it get an object? It's an interesting thing. Um, thought you could, what? Oh, because it you need to give a key. Oh, okay, I see. So this is the way it works. You get the key value. Okay, you get the result and the result contains key. Okay, so basically this is what we want. And if the links is not existent, okay, saved links is gonna be links, saved links. We're gonna use destruction here as well. All right. Below that, um, inspect this, hopefully no errors. Okay, so I think now the application should already have something in storage because we created that empty array, right? So the only question is where the hell is that storage? Cache storage, application storage. Doesn't seem like there is any. Okay, let's try clicking that. Saved. Okay, the links are now actually contain our saved URL. So this is a pointer to the array, which is exactly what we want. Um, and you know what? Let me just say console log for the links, right? Links. Uh, okay, there we go. So it actually works. It's like you don't actually need to. Oh, because I refreshed the extension itself. That's why it's reloaded. Okay, cool. So this part works. We are um, saving the links. The only thing we need to do is to close the pop up, right? So Chrome extension close pop-up, uh, whoops, pop maybe it's in that code that we have here, script, execute script, get save background, uh, save color, get current tab, drop value, drop down, and uh, no, it doesn't seem like they do that, scrum and force pop-up to close, oh, okay, it's just a window, all right, window, close, right, that's what we do, okay, so I go here again, reload that, Let's try to add some other thing, for example, Reddit. So we'll go here, we inspect this, we click on the stash, and there you go, it works. Okay, so we got the addition down. Now, now we need to uh, show the stashed links and we need to export them as um, markdown. So first of all, let's go with the stash. So let's see, Chrome extension, open new window. So I know that you can open Windows, right? Because all of those extensions like the um, uBlock Origin, for example, have the dashboards and stuff like this, loggers. So the question is, how do you do that? Uh, let's see. Uh, Chrome browser unclicked. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Chrome Windows create, there we go. Okay, so this is what we want. And uh, this is actually very straightforward. Uh, and this is gonna be stash, right? So let's call it stash L. I'm gonna copy it from the pop-up and it's gonna be mark stash saved links, right? And uh, I'm gonna comment this for now. We don't care about this. And this is gonna be links here. So 
gonna have a very basic thing uh reload it and let's try pressing it so theoretically it should show the new win um, okay maybe new window is a bit overkill can we get a new there are tabs create okay wait a second where's the api methods there should be create there we go okay so i guess it should have more or less the same signature right so we reload that then uh, show stash there we go this is exactly what we want so in this case uh, we, we should actually be able to debug by just refreshing it, right? So um, this is actually all we need here. I can even make it one liner. There we go. That's nice. And uh, the same goes for export, right? Because there's like all the logic should be in the in the other file. Okay, so we are done with our pop up. Um, let's copy that. Exported markdown. Export mark. Oh, let's just call it export mark. Mark down here. Okay, cool. Um, before I forget, let me init that and uh, it commits basic extension with functional pop up. This is what you want, because I would need to push that to GitHub for you guys. All right, uh, we don't really need more touch manifest anymore, so we are now gonna work on stash. So we need. Uh, we need to load um, js, right? So I'm gonna take this and just go into copy all of that and be like, okay, we don't need that part. Uh, we do need this loading. So this is our links. And now we don't need all of that stuff. So we just wanna render them, right? And uh, that means we need to probably can just do this. And, uh, with like uh, i guess i need one of those things there we go because i'm lazy i'm just gonna copy paste that so i'm gonna container a container and then it's gonna be container inner html is gonna be a links map so we don't want to save anything here we want to actually load links on a links map link to uh, string right and in this case this is gonna be how do we how do we do that so it's actually want to be let's let's just use template strings because this is a nice way of doing it um let's just say this is going to be ul for now right this is going to be links and this is going to be lee and this is going to be link uh what do we have there i already forgot how i said it was like like title and url right yeah I'm gonna have title okay so theoretically if i refresh that uh we don't get anything for whatever reason that they did come here okay why do we not get anything um because i forgot to include it here right <laughs> that explains it Dash. there we go all right we actually have the titles they are super tiny we have to work on that and now we need to make them actual links right so there's going to be a href slash a and uh, this is going to be tie a uh, link url what we want fresh so we now actually have the urls which we can click and they indeed lead where we expect them to lead uh we can kill that we don't care about that right now we need to make it look nicer uh once again let's go to bulma io i mean <laughs> I don't know if I want to pull in the whole framework just for like one button and one list. Um, let's see, uh, layout, columns, form, elements. They have a really nice looking, um, what was it, menu? Yeah, th this looks like super nice, but I don't think we if we want that. There was like content as well. Layout, hero tiles, form, overview sins function mother classes where's the typography thing remember it was somewhere here oh come on is it elements uh it is elements okay content there we go okay uh we can yeah we can, i guess we can just copy this uh list here order list an unordered list yeah there is an order list there we go take this and uh, say okay content ul take that Okay, we need this stash uh, CSS. 
slash CSS and uh, on the UL, I guess we can just say UL because we don't really have anything else there. And uh, for each Lee inside it, uh, margin padding, don't care about that. Doesn't seem like it has any other styling, right? And we can probably apply the font family as well because why the hell not? Uh, there's one large ass font family. Ash. Let's go for the pop up as well to make it look nicer. There go. Okay, that looks a bit better, but still like super tiny. So let's say. Uh, let's see what do we have here. Is there any other styling that we apply? Text size adjust. Maybe we can just say font size. Uh, we am i don't know is that that's much better okay why is there a comma there oh right because it's an array and i have to join it with uh slash n for example right, i don't even care about slash n in this case there we go okay we got that we got the links it looks okay ish um i mean it's functional right so we need to add the feature to remove the links this is what i'm thinking so because like i have all of these things and uh we need a thing. Okay, so first of all, let me see margin top. I uh, guess we can just apply this to the body. Uh, there we go. Okay, that looks nicer. And uh, then we're going to say Lee is going to be margin top. Let's just give it a bit of a margin so that they are a bit more... Um, a bit more have a bit more spacing between each other so it's like easier to read there we go 10 pixels seems to be maybe 1 em i don't know 1 em is probably a lot or yeah 0.8 em no nope, still too much 0 0.5 there we go okay that looks nice all right so now we need um i guess i'm gonna extract this into a function right so i'm gonna call it const Oops, render link. And it's gonna be link. Turn this, and I think I'm just gonna say map render link, right? Okay, so here's the deal. Um, we need to have a link or have a button here that would trigger the removal. I guess we could just go and say that um, click. I mean, we can use on click element, right? Which would work. Uh, global element, no, that's not what we want. It's like at this point, I'm already thinking, like, should we add some framework to that? But uh, yeah, I'm gonna resist that and I'm just gonna do it as on click. Attributes on click. I think it was on click or was it just click? Handlers. Uh, so like one way is to add the um, elements with some ID and then just, you know, use the uh, handlers. I mean, we can, I guess we can probably do that. Yeah, I don't know, why not? You just say this is a class. No, not this. It should be in here, right? So we got the A and then, uh, no, not here. It should be next to it gonna have a h f sharp and then we're gonna say this is gonna move and then it's gonna say class remove right theory yeah there you go there's a move thing um probably i get a good idea to make it look slightly nicer so bulma has this text buttons or not the text the white buttons i think text buttons look slightly weird so we are going to take this white button here and I am going to, yeah, I guess it's the same button. So we got some CSS overlap. So I guess I'm just gonna do this and say button CSS. There we go. Um, so first of all, we're gonna go to the pop-up and say that we want pop-up CSS and let's call it, let's call it common CSS, right? Uh, more sense because it's not just one button. Okay, so we're gonna have common CSS, dash you're gonna have common CSS as well. And that thing is, okay, don't need that anymore. Um, where was the templates class button? 
All right, and uh, is white. So we need is white thing. I'm gonna say is white, and I'm gonna put that styling here. All right, there we go. I don't know why is it on or why is it so freaking tiny, but uh, yeah. Close the console. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, fonts. Uh, I guess. Oh, font size is one rem. Ooh, no, it's too much. One and a half. Okay, and there is probably X decoration or something. No, it doesn't really seem so. I guess we can just say decoration one. There we go. Okay, font size one and a half. Rem, right? One is still too much. One, two. There we go. Okay. Um. Yeah, that looks that looks okay. Do this. Once again, you know, I'm not a designer and uh, some of these things might look terrible, but uh, they're functional. So we did that. Next thing is we need to, so once we render that, we need to say that we go through documents, uh, not Docker. I've been work, working too much with Docker lately get elements by class name, we get all the elements that say remove, right? And we're gonna say array from, so we convert them to array. Then we're gonna say map, it's gonna be elements, uh, we're gonna say elements add event listener, click. Um, I guess we can use for each here because we're not really mapping anything. So we are gonna say that uh, on click, we need to find, so we need the parent element, and then we need to find, uh, no. I mean, I guess we can just use parent and then find the first child, right? Okay, console log. Okay, this is gonna be um, our URL, right? And then uh, basically link L. Oh, this way URL is gonna be think L. Oh man, I want my auto suggest on everything. Okay, uh, H um, attributes. What was it attributes href? Right. I think it's like this. Get that and console log. Move. URL. There we go. Okay. So in theory, if I now click this, oh, first child is not a function. Um, oh, right. Uh, oh, it's not a function. I guess it's just a property. Is that what we want? No, href of undefined. Okay, let's see. So we got link L. L, link L. You get garbage. No, you're not. So, okay, you get this. Okay, this is the part. Why is that? What, what is the parent? Element. Okay, this is the element. This is link element. Okay, so the parent is the right one. Okay. Um, get. I mean, yeah, we can get elements by class name, right? We can just do the same trick. We can just say that this is class link. Just call it this way. So get the links, and we can get the first one, right? So theoretically, if I click this, this, yeah, okay, this is now correct. Now we should get the URL here, right? There we go. Okay, so I got the URL. Um, why is it not? Wait a second. String. Is that a string or is that something different? It is an attribute. Okay. So you get JS href attributes. I it's been ages since I did that, but get blah 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 href. How do you get href? Add attributes. Is there like get attributes? Um, I mean, setting href is one thing. How do I get get a uh, get href attribute? There we go. Uh, blah blah blah. Href get attribute href. Maybe a second. I'm really curious. Will casting it to string actually do it? No, it's still attribute. Okay. Um. So get attribute 
href, will you return me a string? Um, screwed it up. Did I misspelled it? I didn't. Uh, oh, because it should be like this. All right, there we go. There's a link. Okay, and now we need to say that um, cons new links is links. That uh, whoops. I'm just gonna say filter uh, l so that l url not equal our url, right? Console log new links. There we go, and it should be empty exactly. That works. Okay, so we need re-render method. I guess we have to extract that to, uh, or I guess we have to name it right. So I'm gonna say render sync, and we no longer immediately invoke it. I'm gonna say render right. Do that, and we do this, and then we say await. Uh, okay, this first of all, this has to be a sync. And we save that stuff to um, link e new links, right? So we write it down to the storage, and then we say render again. Which in theory that is not too nice to do because that means it's gonna leak the uh, event listeners, right? Because we don't really unbind them, but hopefully we're not gonna have problems with that in the future. I mean, if we will. Let me think. So I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess we need to have some sort of a cleanup. Okay, wait a second. Um, MDN add event listener. There are an easy way to remove event listeners because that will be nice. Last time I used that was not the case. I screwed up the naming again. Yes, I did. Of course I did. Then targets. Okay, so it should return something, right? Param syntax, blah, 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 return value undefined. Um, great. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Um, okay, I guess we can just say maybe this. Okay, so we got const move buttons. Let's just do this. Move buttons. So um, in theory, we render clean up so let's be correct and let's clean up everything run for each um element element remove event listener and click then i think you need to provide the listener to it which is a bit of a pain in it, which means basically that we have to store this function somewhere oh my god so uh, why is it so hard why is that no un like ah we can try to also do it passively, which probably shouldn't be a. I mean, it's theoretically this whole thing shouldn't be a big problem, but um, the, 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 the listener options. Can you return all event listeners? Down doesn't really seem so. This is a bit unfortunate, but I mean we can work around that, right? So we can say button listeners. Under, okay, create the handler, set it here, say passive false, get even nicer. Wonder if you could do that. No, that's not gonna work, right? Because this is the different handler. I'm gonna comment this out, and now the thing is that we need to say button listeners from something. A log and so is there an ID that is assigned to each one of those? No, there is not. And yes, we can just use index. Always uh, rely on their ordering because in theory that should be correct. And so we say index. Theoretically, out of index, we just say handler. All right, and then when we remove it, we just say element index, and it means that click, and it's gonna be button listeners out of index, right? That's all we actually wanna do. And of course, this is gonna complain because I have um, 
call it um, x because of the variable shadowing. I mean, it's not critical, but uh, that's nicer this way. Okay. So, okay, first of all, let's go to like Google or whatever and mark this stuff and go to Twitter. I'm going to Twitter. Why is it so tiny? This stuff. So, if we reload that, we got that. Okay, we in that. And that seems to be okay. So, this seems to be clearing everything up without problems. Now, we got nice rendering. We got the way to remove the links and uh, probably a good idea to commit that. It commits add way to view and remove saved links, right? And last thing that is left is export. So we need to um, generate the markdown and we need to wipe the. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's performance first stream, but I do try to do everything I can. You know, if it's that easy to basically keep away from nasty bugs or nasty performance issues that pop out from like unclean event listeners and stuff like this. Let me have a quick look at the chat. I've tried to set up HTTPS but lost in the process and gave up. Have you done a video on it? I did talk about HTTPS setup with uh, traffic. So uh, there is a video on my YouTube channel about that. Uh, give me a second. I will sh point you to that. Yeah, my channel and uh, there is da -da 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 -da. setting I think it was like about yeah setting up a server for deployment with docker and traffic this is the one so I will uh, I will post a link now in the chat so this is the video that basically guides you through the full server setup from uh, just getting an SSH into a server to setting up Docker and traffic for deployment, including HTTPS, let's encrypt and all that kind of stuff. So I hope that was going to be useful. All right, um, we did that. Now you, I completely forgot what I was going to do. Right, I need to do markdown. Okay, so we need style sheet that's going to be, let's call it export CSS and we're going to have export JS, right? So I'm going to create those export JS. Export CSS. I mean, this project structure is terrible, but um, we're already kind of a bit over time on what I planned. Uh, I'm going to finish it nonetheless, but uh, yeah, that's why it's a mess. It's obviously can be done way better. Um, so we are not, yes, I guess do we, we don't really need any render here. I mean, okay, let's leave it like this, whatever. So what we need to do is we load the links, then we get the container. Um, all that, we don't need that. First of all, uh, we're probably a good idea to open export stash and thing. There we go. Okay, con console. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we get the links. We get the container um, in our HTML. Um, right. So what we want is um, we actually don't need the div here, right? We want text area. And text area, I think it's a value. Then we just render it to the links. So this kind of like this. Um, that's super tiny. Yeah, that looks fine, but we need to render it as a markdown, which means it should be very simple so that we say, okay, this is the link title and then this is the link url and that's actually all we need man do i love markdown okay um there we go i guess it's a better idea to add the line break at the end right okay now we just need to make it <laughs> not as tiny uh so first of all we can include the common css right all right, and I don't think we actually need the common CSS because it has buttons right now. Okay, so we can kill that from here. We can take the export CSS and uh, take this pop-up thing. We don't need this. All right, this is slightly better. I guess we can say, I we can copy the font size from the stash, right? With this font size here. 
go. So now it should be, no, it's not bigger. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna go to the Bulma again and gonna steal the styling from Bulma again because I want my form to look nice. Uh, where's the text area? There we go. Exactly what we want. And uh, gonna copy all of that stuff. And there is a lot of things that are not gonna be used. So first of all, we're gonna kill all those prefix things. Kit shadow, all those prefixes do not make sense in this time and, and day and in this project. I need to add the class. So first of all, yes, this is actually, we don't really care about this, right? So we area, we don't care about the input. We don't care, not rows. Yeah, that's fine. All right, there we go. This is nicer. Why is it so long? What is going on? Um. Max with mean hate me. What? Where's the width? That thousand pixels. Why is it so long? Five hundred. Okay, I guess we need the container for content, right? So let's div class. No, I guess it's gonna be ID container. Yes, we can do that and. Uh, Oh, wait a second. Did I have the container? No, I didn't have it here, right? So I can just take this stash thing. No, not stash pop up. There you go, container. Yeah, so we can just do this. Body container. And uh, in this case, let's call it. I mean, markdown. Yes, why not? Let's do this. Um, and uh, you are going to do this. Okay. Um, that is. Okay. The, this one is fine. This one is still big. On display X. Still not what I want. So if I remove that, if I remove this, okay, this is no. Okay, the height is now screwed. Okay, so this was needed. Now why is the width screwed up? Is that um right? Okay, let me first of all X width min width. that yeah we also don't need those prefix things here right and this weird padding thing again okay slightly nicer now where is why are you so long here's the question ah there we go that fixed it so we can do this Okay, that looks nicer. Now we need just to make the font size 2EM, I think. Well, nope, that's. Was it 2REM? Oh, whoop. Is one, one, no. Still too much, one and a half. Okay, there we go. That is. That looks fine, right? So, and. Uh, now we need a button that will basically wipe everything. I think I'm just gonna put it down here. So I'm gonna say button, we, which means we do need the um, common. Uh, I am going to say da, 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 a button, button, yes. Copy that, A clear stored right gonna be clear button um that is so i am yeah i guess i'm just gonna style it slightly differently using css here so i'm gonna say button margin let's put it margin top um 20 pixels so this is slightly below there we go Font, font size one and a half em why not let's make it uh, ram i think i've been relative we want to be relative there we go okay and we want the styling to be um want it to be a big red button right maybe you also don't really need the flex layout here i don't know was it no we don't need flex layout but Let's do it this so it's say width is no what width 
100 pixel. I mean, we don't need it to be here just too little, 200 pixel. There we go. Okay. And then um, I think we can like pull it to the right side. Um, line self, I think. Accent. There we go. This is what we want, right? Okay. And then we just need to make it red so that it's a. Uh, everyone knows it's a dangerous button to press. Um, elements, buttons, and let me just copy this style here, danger, there we go. Okay, is danger, there we go. Exactly what I want, and I think I can just do it inline because I don't really care about everything else, right? Okay, cool. And now we need to add an event listener to it. Um, so I think we could do that, first of all, we don't really care about this stuff, right? This is completely not necessary here. Okay. Add action to clear button. Okay, documents, get elements by ID. Um, what was it? Button. Add event listener and uh, it's gonna be click. And once we click it, we are gonna do a very simple thing. We are gonna say, Wait, um, so it's gonna be a sync. We're gonna wait, save, it's gonna be links key. And we're gonna put it, put an empty array over there, right? So this is all we need to do. And then we're just gonna say container value is now empty. I think it might be a good idea to set a placeholder here as well. Or links converted to mark. Maybe a good idea to also say, um, what's the, wait a second, next area, uh, editable, there should be a property, read only, there we go, read only, right, because we don't really want the user to edit that, there we go, okay, so if I click a clear button, there is nothing here, and no stored links, no links currently Stored. There we go. Okay. Cool. So uh, show stash stash. Uh, we probably should render something in the stash saying that there are no links as well, right? Because the just showing empty page is never nice. Um. So we get the container. Okay. If we say if links link. Uh, link. Okay. We just return and we say container HTML. One, for example, no links stored yet. H1. Let's see if, uh, whoops, that should be closing. That is very big. Let's make it some slightly smaller. All right, that's more sane. That looks nice. And I think we are basically done here. It commits, adds, uh, exports. To markdown things export to markdown there we go okay we did that so um i think we're basically done for today there is a compile and publish extension to the google which is basically chrome extension publish which I, it's like it's literally you now have i think here's a pack extension button so you just say okay here's my root directory and here's my private key if you want one. I, I don't remember if you need one. So there is publish your Chrome, X, yeah, publish in Chrome App Store. I don't remember if you get a private key from a web store, um, but it's been quite some time since I published anything in there. Like I have, like if you, if you don't know, you have to actually pay to get in the store. It's like $5 fee, I think, but basically just to stop the scammers and uh, spammers mostly. So it's a one-time payment. I have paid some time ago, but uh, hell if I remember how to use it. So create a developer account, upload zip, pick payment system. Okay, we don't need that. Get app ID, get OS token, finish the app. We don't really need any of that. So we just package it and then basically upload to the uh, store, right? So I don't think it's worth showing. I think it's straightforward enough that you can figure it out in yourself. And as usual, Google have pretty good docs. Um, I think Firefox uh, so uh, is a bit less demanding. 
on the uh, publishing stuff so it doesn't really require any payments so if you want to you know publish it in firefox that probably were going to be easier but yeah i think we are basically done yes indeed 13 viewers 14 viewers right now it's it's kind of incredible that all of you guys want to see me build terrible chrome extensions <laughs> all right uh let me publish this extension on github what 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 wait what okay that, that was weird markdown having oh sorry github having some uh, hiccups i see okay uh we can i guess we need a readme md here as well readme md so we can close all of that uh whoops there it's gonna be readme and um gonna be uh wait, where's my where's my manifest i really don't like the structure of this extension so i would probably restructure it a bit to have like folders for css for javascript which wouldn't take too long time but you know we're already over the allotted hour for like what i typically do for a stream but uh you know let's just go with whatever we have all right uh, so we did that we need some readme file meanwhile uh feel free to ask the questions if you have any we'll be happy to answer there is, by the way, a lot of really cool things coming out for the BXJS Weekly News Podcast. There has been a lot of really awesome news this week. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, let's just take the notes PVA we did last time and uh, copy this from here. There we go. Markdown. So this is example Chrome extension. That allows saving and um, allows Saving links to Markdown. Let's just call it this way. Uh, Freeman Software I'm building simple ROM extension. There we go. Ordinary materials for building simple ROM extension. I am gonna put in a video later. I think I did not put in a video here, which is a problem. So I should do that at some point. As a simple ROM extension that allows storing links um syncs them using chrome uh, chrome uh, storage system and allows exporting link lists using markdown there we go okay running project clone this repository um and uh, load into chrome as a packaged extension from chrome um extensions right this is basically all we want related links from extensions tutorial and i think that's basically the only link we need here because we're in, i mean we use like bulma css but whatever from extensions tutorial where was it it was a decently good tutorial i mean the docs are quite good so i don't think there's going to be any problems uh for people doing that git add readme git it add readme go git push all right um Kind of new to development have a question regarding extensions and web request if extensions making a web request how secure is the request is it via https uh, i mean that completely depends uh where you send the request right so extensions are not bound to the same origin policy as the uh websites right so if you're on a website you cannot make a request to another domain unless it has a course header extension does not have this restriction if it has correct permissions obviously so basically it's up to you to use https protected domain if you want it to be secure and you know if you use https protected domain then okay it's going to be https encrypted and everything's going to be nice and secure if not then well obviously it's going to be a basic http request but i think it's just in 2018 it's quite easy to have everything behind https so you know let's encrypt is doing amazing job helping in that all right, the other question is working on Chrome Station now as well. Suitable stream. Well, you're welcome. Hope you found something useful in here. <laughs> uh, Sinks. Um, did I made a typo somewhere and you guys are going to go crazy? Sinks. I, oh, thank you very much. 
Uh, sorry for the long question. No, it's okay. Long questions are okay. I'm fine with answering those. It's always fun. Okay, get, um, uh, let me just amend that. Uh, whoops. Go. Okay, fix the typo. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I know some people would go crazy over that. All right. Um, right, we got that. Okay, we now should push that. So we got read me, we got everything ready. Uh, da -da -da -da. We got this, we got that. And come on. Right, I think we are basically I mean, I don't like the structure so much. It just bugs me so much. You know what? Um, just I'm. You know what? I'm just gonna yes move that. I am just gonna do this because this annoys me to no extent. I hate poorly structured projects. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, that's not what I want to create. The JS folder. Um. Yeah. Please close this icon. It's a bit too big. Okay. So I believe. Like here's the question. If I just move them, uh, will it work normally? So if I just um configure the pass. Like if I just do it this way, um, theoretically it should work, right? Because it uses the relative path. Says and JS, okay. Let's see. Uh, whoops, nope. Oh, I want. Um, did I use any pop up? We used the stash. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay, so let's just test it. We're not gonna hack it. Reload that. Um, yep, that seems to be working just fine. Let's just make sure that it's actually odd something. So we'll go add a Reddit and reload that. We got a, okay, so what we'll works? Um, this um, bam, nicer project structure, not uh, structure. There we go. Git push. Okay, I think now we're done. So this, come on, show me, show me nice structure. There we go. Okay. I'm happy with that. It's not perfect, but I'm very happy with that. Uh, hey, Renato, thanks for watching. As always, you are quite welcome. It's always fun to do this with uh, chat together. Basically, you know, uh, really a dozen of rubber duckies in the chat. I mean, that that is actually very close to the feeling I have, but this is actually what's amazing. You know, you never you never have as much insight into your own code as the chat has. So it's it's a pretty unique experience. And and I really enjoy doing that, guys. So thank you very much for watching this stuff. Um, as always, there is way more, whoops, that not what I wanted to do, way more proposals. So if you're not familiar with my channel, every Wednesday I do a live stream where I build something that is suggested by the viewers. There is a proposals uh, GitHub repository where you can either suggest your own thing or go and vote on existing proposals. You can do that by just adding um, any emotes you like here. It just doesn't matter which ones. Uh, on Tuesdays, I pick the top voted topics and do them. So today, one of the top voted were Chrome extension, and this is what I did. Um, so, you know, if you want to see something build, if you are interested in some topics, go and add them, go and vote for them. Uh, obviously, the topic should be suitable for one or two live streams max. But yeah, this is basically what I do. Do not forget to do this. Uh, if you are just joined and want to watch the whole live stream, it is going to be available as a VOD here on Twitch, as well as it is going to be available as a VOD on my YouTube channel. Links to all of those things is on Twitch in the channel description there below. Just go down and look at that. Um, and that's basically it. So unless, yes, there is a Discord channel. Thank you, Renato. There is a Discord channel. So if you have any off stream questions or you need help, come join us. There is a lot of people who will help you, including me. I'm quite frequently there and will be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, as well, guys like Renato are always there and um, they're always will be happy to help you when they are there. They are even though they always say, oh, we don't know anything. They're quite experienced. Don't trust them. They know their stuff and they will help you. <laughs> All right. Um, that seems to be it. No more questions from the chat. So thank you guys very much for the stream. Let's call it uh, a night for today. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.